guys, Chris here again with Project Nerf, and today we're going to do another episode of Nerf ER, and this time it's on one that's near and dear to my heart. My caliber. Um, so let's get at it. Paging Dr. Chris. Dr. Chris to the ER. Paging Dr. Chris to the ER, please. All right, guys, as you can hear, the uh, the rain's moved in. Sorry if it's kind of dark in here. I've been doing the best I can with my shop lighting. Anyway, uh, why are we doing an ER on the caliber? Well, it's got to the point now where the caliber will not prime. Uh, so if I get a good grip on it here, you can hear that. That should have locked, and it just, it just lets go. So what I've done here is I've ordered the aluminum kit. Uh, it's got an upgraded sear and all this stuff. And uh, we're going to see if we can uh, can make this happen. So I'm going to get the tail apart, and uh, we'll see what we can do. P.S., uh, as you may notice here, mine is pre-teardown generation, so I got a little work to do. All right, so I've removed all the bolts from the back side, slid everything out as it should be. All right, so what's in the aluminum kit? Okay, we have our trigger guard, trigger, mag release, pusher, very pretty in aluminum and uh, sear hopefully we can make that go and of course our trigger so uh, it came with the o-rings it came with the alignment pins it came with screws so anyway uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and work this a little farther now that the bolts are all off the whole bottom of the uh, caliber here uh, does come off there we go all right so that's going to make uh, life a whole lot easier doing the uh, the sear and the uh, trigger group. And all this is functioning well, but uh, you can see right there, hopefully you can see it, focus. The, uh, the, the top of the sear is just gone. Uh, you see how this is a nice squared edge and how this has been rounded over, and that's why it won't stay primed. So uh, all of this looks pretty good. Uh, so we're going to start by... Uh, taking this apart, we have a very, very small pin here uh, to remove our little trigger guard. So let me see, I've got a little tiny screwdriver. Let's see if that's sufficient enough to fit in there. Yes, it is. Push that pin through. Set that aside. And then that just comes out of there like so. So no problems there. We have a brand new one. We're just going to check really quick the fitment of our pin. Okay, that's fine. Set that aside. Trigger and sear are, the trigger is not actually on a spring. What happens is the sear is on a spring here. I actually added an extra one uh, to try to get this thing to catch and it just won't do it. So what we got to do is take these screws out. There's one on each side. There's a fitting in there that catches these screws. So we're going to get a little bit smaller screwdriver. Let's try this. See how well it fits here. And there we go. We're going to remove that. And one from this side. Okay, and that's pretty good. There is a metal fitting in there that you're going to have to wiggle with and play with and mess around with. And then we have to get down in here and get the springs off of, there's a tab right in here in the handle. I hope you guys can see it. Um, there's one. There's two. All right, so in theory, we should be able to manipulate our sear out of there. Here we go. There we are. So there's the springs that I had on it. Uh, again, trying to, for extra spring mass to, whoops, hold it down. So we're gonna hold on to those. And then the trigger, as you can see, just free floats. The top of the sear sits on top of the trigger and holds it in place. So uh, take these two screws out and we should be able to Replace our trigger, and it will be a similar aluminum fitting in there that the screws go in. There's that. Okay, and then we just have to 
wiggle that out of there uh, the best as we can. There's a little rotational pin in there. It's kind of a pain in the butt. There we go. There it is, right there. So, uh, the pin just helps everything stay in place. It sets down in the trigger. Let's see if we can do this like that. And then the screws just screw right into it. So, so there it is. We have completely dismantled the handle here. Uh, I'm going to move on, go ahead and get this set back up with the new parts, and then I'll show you guys how we're going to go ahead and remove the pusher and the uh, mag release. Okay, well, that didn't take too long. Uh, I did have to sand down the trigger guard just a little bit to get it to fit in the 3D printed part, but that's in there nice and secure now. Trigger's in, no problem. Springs are on. Sears doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, and the only other modification we had to make is the barrel that the sear rides on that goes in this part right here. Was a little loose in the aluminum part, so I put a wrap of E-tape around it just to snug it up and make sure that we don't have too much wobble. And as you can see, that's nice and solid. So um, that should do pretty nicely. Okay, for the mag release, uh, we have one. Uh, I don't really see a need in doing it. Um, I put this... Uh, detent short dart uh, mag well in there and my mag tolerances were so tight that uh, that's never coming out anyway so I'm not even gonna mess with this to be honest let's take a look at getting this pusher off and seeing what we can do about getting that pad uh, off of it and back onto this uh, aluminum pusher okay so I came to a command decision here pretty quickly unscrewed this the bolt does not come out. It's made in one piece. This is, again, this is a first-gen caliber, and I don't know if it's two pieces on later models. And I didn't want to cut that off and try to screw it into this or anything like that. Maybe you're supposed to. You guys hit me in the comments. But uh, in the interest of the bolt maintaining the proper length, uh, we're going to leave this alone. That part's working okay. So uh, at this point, we're going to go ahead and uh, put it back together. tail end with the uh, 5AF Pros in it. So let's, uh, well, that works. That works. Definitely shoots. Let's do that a couple of more times here. Couldn't hear it ricocheting off of my garage door there. Uh, yeah, it's working great. So this is uh, something to uh, to watch out for here, guys, in the future. And again, hopefully I can get it close enough where you can see it. 
Yeah, there you go. You can see a pretty big chunk taken out of the top of the sear, and uh, so it wouldn't, wouldn't catch anymore. Uh, what a pity, but that's okay. This kit was only like uh, 40 bucks from Out of Darts. Now it's all aluminum. It looks great. It's working fine, and uh, let's get it on the chrono. See what happens. All right, so we're outside to get the chrono set up. Uh, first, told you a little lie on the bench. This spring that I had in is my light duty spring. Um, I don't even know what that is or what it came out of. But I was getting in the 140s with that thing. Uh, I now have a full length of K26 in the blaster. And it was hitting around uh, 165, 170 very consistently with the scar barrel on the end here. Uh, so let's see uh, if those numbers hold true with this aluminum rig. It's a little heavier. I would expect a small drop in performance, to be honest. But let's see. Yeah, a little error there. So, uh, yeah, uh, our numbers are pretty much the same. This is a good, uh, you know, uh, super match blaster. I really, really like it, and I'm really glad that this uh, this kit got it working again. All right, so the question is, can I hit anything with this thing with no sights on it? Had an optic on here, uh, took it off when the blaster started malfunctioning. Let's see. Oh yeah, we can definitely hit that 20. A little high. We're gonna have a double feed there. Right on it. I can hit stuff. Yay! Guys, if you haven't done it yet, hit that subscribe button, hit all notifications so that you always know when our new content's coming up. Uh, if you like this format of video where we take these uh, take these blasters that need a little help and uh, get them back in the game, well, uh, yo, hit me in the comments with a Nerf ER and a thumbs up. We love to see that. As always, guys, in the description box below, I'll list our links to our Facebook, links to the shop, our fan mail address if you wanted to go ahead and send something in. Till next time, this is Chris for Project Nerve saying have a blast.